You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Brewski. Featuring former federal prosecutor and president of West Coast trial lawyers, Nima Ramani. Alec pleading guilty to the financial crimes the first time he's ever been in front of a judge and said, I did it. Other than yeah. in his uh, murder trial where he, he did that by, I didn't think he really much of a choice. But this time when he's actually being asked about the charges, he did it and admitted to 22 charges. Should be noted there's more than 100 left. He says to show responsibility to his son, Buster. A little late for that, Dad. What are your yeah. thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he probably saw the writing on the wall, right? Yeah. His, well, one, he admitted to it during the murder trial, right? Testified to it under oath. Uh, it was a clear electronic paper trail. He stole the money. I mean, engaged in these fraudulent schemes. Some of them very elaborate, by the way, mm-hmm. involving the housekeeper and so forth. And, you know, his co-defendant pled and got 20 years. So, yeah. I mean, there's no question he was going to be convicted on the fraud case. And you and I have been talking. I said, well, you know what? If there's any chance that the murder convictions get overturned, let's just try those fraud cases first. Let's make sure we get the conviction. That way, he's a convicted felon. It doesn't come in as sort of motive evidence or prior bad acts. It actually mm-hmm. comes in substantively if he testifies because he's now convicted. So not surprising. And he's going to get a lot of time, Tony, you know, under the federal sentencing guidelines, the the advisory guideline range is driven in these cases by the amount of the fraud. So here, I think we got what more than 7 million. And the worst thing you can do as a lawyer is steal money from your clients. So there's all these different types of enhancements that are going to pile on. So he's going to get double digit years in prison. And that's not even counting the potential retrial. If for some reason that (laughs) conviction of the life sentence is overturned. And if we do go to a retrial, which is still up in the air, who know if the allegations are true, certainly he is entitled to that. We'll yet to figure that out. But if it were to go to another trial, there's been more claims that have been made uh, outside of court. This is last week. Eddie Smith, uh, this is the uh, man that was on the side of the road with him. And as Alec claimed, tried to kill him and it was attempted suicide attempt and all the variations to it whatsoever. Eddie, not exactly one of the most reputable individuals, but saying on the Netflix documentary on season two, when he asked, well, why do you want me to kill you, Alec? Alec's response was reportedly because they're going to be able to prove that I'm responsible for Maggie and Paul. Does that hold any sort of weight if this were to go to uh, another trial? Could that be testimony that is brought in and Curtis Eddie Smith uh, actually testifying as he did not uh, in the first round? I think so. I think if you're going to retry the case, you want to get those admissions in. And yeah, I mean, that's also one of those bizarre episodes, right? Where, you know, he tries to basically orchestrate his own death, you Mm -hmm. know, so, you know, his family can get for life insurance reasons. Obviously, Murdoch is a professional insurance scammer so whether it's his own life insurance or homeowners insurance you know i think that will come in and just kind of going back one thing i forgot to mention on the federal plea i think there's a little bit of gamesmanship here i'm sure alex wants to spend some time in federal prison as opposed to south carolina state prison most of the time those federal prisons tend to be a little bit nicer Mm -hmm. than state prison so that could actually be part of the strategy here because i think that's been a big surprise to everybody that he's admitting anything uh that's an interesting strategy uh, right there to change your venue of where you're living at by admitting to crimes and, and he has plenty it seems to admit to you know kind of going back to a recent case it was Derek chauvin you know people don't really remember this because the plea was rejected but chauvin was originally willing to plead guilty to federal charges and the attorney general at the time, Bill Barr, rejected the deal, which is why he ended up going to trial. But he wanted to serve federal time. Now, of course, a little bit different there. He's a police officer and he probably didn't want to be in state prison with a lot of the folks that he arrested and put away. But um, we do see this on occasion where defendants you know, want to take a federal deal to avoid going the state prison route. If we do see a new murder trial for Alec Murdoch, could they? Could his defense come back with a whole different story, a whole different defense? Because obviously the first time around didn't work out so well for them. Obviously all that other character information came into play, which certainly damned Alec. But do you see them coming up with maybe more of the missing pieces 
filled in that everybody wonders about? Where'd the money go? And possibly some of the theories that have been abound for quite some time that maybe somebody came in and this was a hit and, and Alec maybe knew about it in some way, shape or form. I don't know. There's a lot of directions it could possibly go. Or do you see them just sticking with the same story that they've stuck with the whole time? I think you got you got to try something different. It's hard because you know, obviously, Alex has locked himself into this testimony. He can just replay that in court if you're the prosecution. But they got to come up with something else as opposed to you know, it wasn't me. You know, because you know, I think they really wanted to rely on the lack of the blood splatter. Right? They thought the cell phone cell site evidence would end up being different. I don't think they anticipated that Snapchat video. So. Mm-hmm. The defense failed, and it failed pretty quickly. Now, look, obviously there's the argument that the clerk was involved and there was jury tampering and misconduct. But at the end of the day, you know, maybe at best there was that one juror that was removed, maybe a handful more, but he was nowhere close to an outright acquittal. So I don't think you take the same strategy if you're the defense. you got to try something different. And frankly, you're kind of free-rolling here, right? He's going to do so much time on the fraud charges. He's likely going to die in prison one way or the other. So you have the luxury of being a little bit creative because worst-case scenario, you get another life sentence because you're not seeking death here. You're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.